welcome back to Fast Eddie Bearings and our DR10 drag car build. This is the next episode in our extremely exciting how to build your associated DR10 drag car builder's kit step by step and all of the fun that goes along with it. So we are going to start now on are we on we are on front suspension build bag three step one here we go okay we are now opening up bag number three this is so exciting i just uh don't know what to do with myself here so we will get all the pieces and parts out of bag one which seem to be plenty of them and make sure again i can't say this enough make sure your bags are completely empty before throwing away or piling on your floor whichever it might be and we will now open up our little parts bag so exciting and once again please make sure that bag is empty Lots of little pieces and parts and stuff and would you metalia? Wow, we got all sorts of stuff in here. Okay. Yay. Now, here we go. We are going to look for our front arms. Arm, yes. And it looks like we have a couple of them here. Now, we still have tree stubs. Look at that. So, we are going to remove them. I like to use a flat cutter. Um, you can use a regular cutter, but if you use a flat cutter, you don't have to use a file or a razor blade or anything to remove any, any little nubs. So I really, really suggest that you go out and buy a flat cutter. It really does help. Okay, so we now have our A-arms ready to go. And we are gonna take a look at the A-arms here. And they have two holes in them, you can see here. And as we look at the directions, we can see that those two holes go in this direction. So we're gonna start with this one. And we are going to grab our steering assembly and make sure we get the proper one. So as we look at the directions, we can see that the arm goes to the back and the ball stud goes to the front and the axle goes to the outside. Okay, so we are now going to find our two by four, no, what are we gonna find? Our hinge pins, our outer hinge pins, which are the smaller of the two, because the longer ones go in the back. So the shorter one. And let's go ahead and place this in here, which is actually very loose. Put the pin in. See, I missed. <laughs> I missed the hole. Wow. Go figure. There we go. I'm going to push that in there. Everything moves good. Let's take a look again. Make sure we got this on right. Okay, as we're looking here, we have the two holes to the front, and the steering arm goes to towards me. Okay, so now very tricky we are going to take a two by four millimeter button head screw and put it into this hole and what that does is it retains do i have the right driver i do look at that it is a 1.5 millimeter what this is going to do is the little flat portion of the screw here is going to retain the hinge pin. So we're going to go ahead and screw that in. It is very small and short, so you don't want to over tighten it. Just put it in until it touches. 
and that goes in on this portion, this side of the A arm. Okay, and it's not showing that we retain it on the other side. because the other side actually has the smaller. So the, it's not gonna come out, it's just retained just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the other one. So we will grab the short hinge pin. You can see the bucket there, I got all sorts of crap in there. And we will go ahead and Put this in. Come on. Wow, again, I missed the hole. Go figure. You wouldn't think I've been married for 28 years. Or maybe that's the reason why. <laughs> I'll have to ask. Okay, so now that we're done with the not PG portion of our build. Go ahead and put that little screw in to retain the hinge pin. And again, just till it touches or you will strip it. Okay, and again, we want to make sure that everything is good and non-binding. Okay, so now we need to clear off a little space here. <clears throat> and get our chassis back out. Where's our chassis? Here we go. And we are going to connect our A-arms to the chassis. And this is going to start off with our chassis brace, which we need to take a look at here because it goes on in this direction with the little nubs here that match up you can actually see here they match up to the nubs on there so that's how this is going to go on and we are going to place our longer hinge pins let's get both of them out of our bucket here and we will put this Go ahead and slide this over here. And we are going to put our hinge pin through here. And slide it through, just like so. And my question is, is does that push all the way through? Yeah, see, that pushes all the way through. So. What are we going to do? I guess the directions will tell us what to do. So we are going to go ahead and put this on. Let's go ahead and do the other side as well, as long as we're wrestling this cat in the bag. Like so. And then we need to put in two more the little screws with some thread lock to retain the front portion. And I keep looking here, and I'm not sure what retains the rear portion of these arms, because that pin can slide through. So I guess we will find out here shortly. Just a little bit of thread lock on there because we are going in metal to metal. This is quite interesting. Just trying to figure out the madness here. How is that supposed to stay on? What am I missing? Okay, I am putting these on backwards. That's what I'm missing.
I don't know why this is manually focusing or automatically focusing. I turned the manual focus off. So maybe I need to learn my equipment a little better. Okay, so let's put these on in the proper direction this time. And see if it works any better. It just something didn't seem right as I was doing this. Okay, so steering links go towards the rear. Okay, so let's try this again. Seeing as how this one already has the screw in, we have to push this in first. So I don't take the screw out. Okay, so we got that one in. Now, let's go ahead and put this side in. And again, it falls off. How is that retained in there? I don't know. Come on. Oh, here we go. That's how it's retained on there. There's two screws. <laughs> okay. Let's use the... These are 3 by 10 button heads. And there are two of those in there. I'm just checking the size on our little schematics there to make sure we're getting the proper ones in there. And those go into here. Whoop, you can see, clutch set too tight. I stripped that one. I'm going to take that back out and put a little super glue back on there later. <clears throat> and we will get our second little retaining screw here. Put a little thread lock on there. Put that one in this side. Okay, so. aren't very free in there. I don't know why. See these screws, yeah, they are, they are retaining. I'm trying to free this up a little bit because it does seem a little too stiff. Back these out a little bit. There you go, that loosens those up a little bit. What I did was I uh, just loosen these screws up just a tiny bit. And now we have free play there. Not as free as I wished they were. And it looks like on the rears here, I'm looking at the directions, <clears throat> and it's not showing me to put the retaining screws in the rears of the suspension. Did I miss a step here? I did. Okay. I missed a step. Right here. Okay, so if you look at the back here, you're going to see two little holes, one on each side, and that retains the hinge pin. So, we will see how hard it is to get these in once the A-arms are on. See if we can do this. There we go. Not bad at all. I knew I was missing something. Okay, we got to find one more tiny little hinge pin retainer screw, and we're done with this step. 
tiny little puppies. Okay. Wow. Such an easy, easy step, and I just happened to fudge that whole thing up. But the end of the game, we're done. There we go. Look at that. We now have... I got to figure out how to get that autofocus turned off. And we're all set to go. So that is front suspension build bag three, step one. And now we are going to go on to front suspension build bag three, step two. Wow, aren't we good? Okay, so this looks like it involves the front shock tower. Let's go ahead and move this up. We have a front shock tower. And then we also have the front body mount. And those are the two pieces involved here. So what we need to do is take a look at the front shock tower. And we have a front and a rear. Okay, so the front right here, which we're going to call the front, has a tab with two holes in it. The back is pretty much flat. Okay, so this is the side we want to work with. And we need, at this point, two ball studs along with two washers. So we've got only two ball studs in here, so we don't have to measure. And two washers. Okay, there are some very tiny little black metal washers, little spacers. Now, as I'm looking at this, it looks like they want us to put the ball studs on the inner two holes. There's an adjustment here so you can adjust the inner or the outer, and it wants us to go to the inner holes. Is our camera freaking out again? Wow. Let's get this step done. Come on, camera. Bounce it around a little, see if it quits. That's really weird. We'll be right back. Let me get this figured out. Okay, I think we got the camera figured out. Let's see. <laughs> Keeps freaking out on me every now and then. So, okay, so we need to take the front suspension and we are working with the front shock tower and we are going to place the ball studs into the innermost. Well, that one's hard to fit in there. Into the innermost hole in the brace. And that's a long one. Turn the clutch up a little bit there. And get the other side. Come on. That's a tight fit. It doesn't want to go in there. And again, to the innermost hole in the front shock tower. There we go. That was pretty easy. Now we need to place the body mount onto the shock tower. Now, looks to me like this one is using a series of nuts and bolts and from the front and the back. So this is going to fit on here just like so. You'll see that the backside has the uh, ridges on here and the front side has this little plate that covers. There's a hole in the back. That's going to fit right over here. And it is using a M3 by 8 flathead, which is there's only one in there. So 
so we're going to go ahead and place that in the center here. I have to remember that I have readjusted my clutch, so I'm going to turn it back down. Okay, now it looks like on here we have 3 by 26 buttons, which are the longer ones in there. And they are captured by two nuts on the back. And these are going through what looks to be the center hole on the directions here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this, oh, these are for the shocks, that's what that is. We're gonna go ahead and put this in and press it all the way through. And use the uh, screwdriver if it won't press through evenly. I believe these are the shock mounts. There we go, and we're gonna follow those up with nuts. And my nut drivers are not that deep, so we're gonna use a pair of pliers. Go ahead and snug those down. And we are getting close to finishing this step. Okay. Put that little puppy on there and cinch it down. There we go. Okie dokie. Now, it looks like we have one more step to go here. So we need to put our body posts on there, and it's saying to trim them. Okay, so we have body posts here, and they have holes in them. And it is saying to trim the bottom two holes off and to go through the middle of the third one. So we are going to trim the bottom two off and go through the middle of the third one. Again, trim the bottom two off and go through. the middle of the third one, just like so. That cannot be undone if you mess it up. I almost cussed. Okay, so let's grab this. Let's take a look at the directions here. And we want to place these in, and it looks like we're gonna go all the way down with them and then put the M2.5 by 14 screw through there. So we're gonna press those all the way in and down. Make sure that your holes are pointing in the right directions and you don't get it turned sideways like this, because that's not gonna work very well. Okay, let's put those in, and then we need to use the 2.5 five socket heads. So those are the only socket heads that are in there and a socket head looks like that. As compared to the button head, which is rounded or the flat head, which is a V shape. So we are going to put the screws in from the front and we wanna make sure that we line up through here as you can see there, with a hole. And what size is that? Yes, that is still a same size we're using. You only want to put it in until it touches because you will strip those out. OK, 
Okay, so let's make sure we got our hole in the right direction here. What is up with that? This one goes into there. Are there two different body posts? Because this one, the hole goes all the way down. Look at that. They're different. And those are the only body posts that were in there. See how they're different? This one is much longer here than this one. Interesting. Okay, we will make do. We're going to put this in until we reach the first hole. I have to lift this up in the light to see. Or we will get out our little doodad here and let it help us find the first hole. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, I got two different body posts in here. Huh. Very interesting. We're just going to make them even. Go from there. Different bodies that you put on are going to require different heights anyway, so... Once we figure out what body we're going to put on there, then we will work with the height on that. Okay, so now we are going to place this onto the chassis. And we are going to use four M3x12s, which are the last four screws that we have left. So. This is going to fit right down on there. <clears throat> You'll see that there are these little round area here, and you want to drop those down onto the round area on here. It fits on just like that. And we will place our four screws on. Just like so. I think this is our last step in this bag. And we'll take a little break and go from there. Most of the front of the car seems to be done here. And I think we're going to be working on the rear next. What do you think so far? I'm having fun. I don't know about you guys. Okay. My clutch wasn't set quite tight enough, so I'm going to finish this up by hand. I didn't want to strip those out. They are pretty stiff getting in there. A lot stiffer than I thought they would be. And I knew that because this was loose, and I knew that they weren't completely tight. Wow. Table vibration. Not quite sure. I'm gonna, still going in a long way. I'm going to tighten that clutch up a little. There we go. Yeah, 
And we now have the front of our car done. You can see that everything is moving smoothly. Everything seems to be in the right position and the right order to make everything work. We didn't put on anything backwards, which was kind of a first for me. Everything's operating smoothly. And that's what it looks like. Let's see if we can focus in just a little bit here for you. There we go. Okay, we have now finished bag three. That's what we have. What do you think? You like that? Okay. Now, if you like what we're doing, subscribe fast eddy bearings for all your bearing needs mm -hmm.